So let's talk about some of the seed oils specifically. We talked yep. about some of the animal fats, but let's talk about some of the seed oils that we cook with. Um, so corn oil, coconut oil, olive oil. Oh, what am I missing? Um, canola. Canola oil. Uh, sunflower. I don't think I think you said that. No, I didn't. Um, there's probably others out there. Yep. So here's one of the issues that I think that you need to be careful of. First of all, I think what's the most important is what Janet said is just in moderation. Um, so one of the things about the seed oils is that, I mean, if you think about corn oil, you don't, I mean, look at a corn, look at corn kernels, look at the corn plant. You, you can't see that it's not high in fat. I mean, I mean, think about that. It's not high in fat. Unlike olives. I mean, olives are high in fat. Look at the nutritional value of an olive. And remember, oils are essentially fats. So it should be pretty easy to extract or relatively easy to extract fat out of an olive compared to a corn kernel. So in order to extract a, a oil out of corn, it, it is quite a process. And it's quite... Re- takes a lot of refining, a lot of heat. Um, so it's not at its raw source. I mean, corn is just not, if you think about it, just let's just be rational about it. I mean, corn is not a good source of healthy fats or fats at all. I mean, it's almost pure carbohydrates. So to try to get oil out of it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I'm not necessarily saying corn oil is bad, but there's probably some that are better. So olive oil, you can actually have cold pressed olive oil because olives are high in fat. So it doesn't have to go through a lot of processing. And during that processing, a lot of things are, you know, nutritional value of anything that's in there is, is ruined or, um, you know, like in when you have to have high, add a lot of heat to produce corn oil. So it's important that the less processing, the better. And to process olive oil, it takes a lot less processing. Right. So I think what we're trying, the point we're trying to make is that the closer it is that you don't have to continue to process something to extract something to get nutritional value, probably the better it is. Um, my personal opinion is I use all of the oils out there, but but here's how I use them. For example, um, I'm not frying in corn oil. I'm not frying even in olive oil. I, I use them for, you know, maybe those things aren't sticking. Um, but if I was going to choose, for example, um, salad dressing, what would I use? Well, obviously, olive oil seems more appealing to me just because nutritionally, it and it also tastes better as far as I'm concerned because corn oil can actually kind of smell funny. If you ever smelled it, it smells funny to me. Um, but I think the argument that we're going down is that um, we made corn oil be this wonderful product. And I'm not saying it's horrible. I'm just saying that that's probably not my first choice. Um, and we're vilifying a product. But I think it comes down to how you're using those products. Well, yeah, let's talk about how we use them. So Jenna was talking about frying. You know, I, I imagine she's kind of talking about you know, deep fat frying right. type things. Well, that's probably not a good thing to do anyway. Right. You're heating up an oil to a very, very high temperature, which can um, make it break down into bad things, right. um, oxidize, cause oxidation in our bodies, possibly. Um, and really, if you if you cook the right things and you cook a right the right balanced meal, you don't need a lot of to add a lot of stuff for, um, for frying or, um, you know, if you look at vegetable oil, a lot of times what vegetable and help me out, Janet, a lot of times what vegetable oils are used for is a lot of baking, correct? Right. So in my house, if we were going to make something, for example, if you were making from a, a box, you know, if you're making waffles or muffins or even some cake mixes, um, you're not making them per se from scratch. I mean, I, I think we, think we are, but we're really not when we're taking it from a box. And so the argument that I was giving my husband last night when we were discussing this uh, topic is I think it's in combination of what we are using our fats with 
that is part of the problem because I don't think it's just the fats. I, uh, yes, I do think that there are better choices. And by all means, you're seeing that when coconut oils came out um, and, and different um, ways of baking. Um, but my argument was, is that because we think oils are causing all this inflammation and it's the inflammation that is causing the disease problems or the other things that are happening down in our bodies that, you know, arthritis, um, you know, gut issues, uh, cardiac issues. Uh, I think it's a combination of things. I don't think there's one evil culprit. I think there's a combination of things coming together. And so my argument with this is we're using a lot of oils with pure sugars. Uh, processed sugars. So I'm going to throw processed food under the table um, as being the culprit versus just the oils. Yeah. And uh, although if you do look at that, um, you know, corn oil is pretty highly processed. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying that it's, it's, it's a whole thing of we put them together with other things that aren't very healthy. And so when you put them together, you know, it's not just one thing that's causing all this inflammation. It's multiple things. That's my point. Yeah, and that's one of the things with the seed oils is because they they can cause oxidation. They can get oxidized at lower temperatures than animal fats. So, I mean, think about bacon grease or think about, um, you know, butter. I mean, it can tolerate a very high temperature before it has a flash point, which usually that's when things start causing problems with oxidation and things like that. It was vegetable oil, not so much. I don't know exactly off the top of my head what the flashpoints are, but it, it's not tolerant to heat as as like um, animal fats. So that's one of the problems in our bodies too is they're not as stable. So, And there's some talk about linoleic acid and how that causes problems with the, with the uh, seed oils and things. I don't necessarily think it's necessarily that. I think like Janet says, I think it's a, a lot to do with moderation and what you're eating with those oils. So right. if you are deep frying in them, probably don't do that. 